Hey guys, this is Echo Sowers, and you are checking out a tip and trick tutorial video on ADSR. So in this video, we'll be talking about three rules, guidelines, if you want to go there, but they're almost rules that you should follow if you want to create the perfect sub base. So let's go. All right, the first rule is, or guideline rather, you need to decide what's going to be more important in your mix. Is it the kick or is it the sub, right? One's got to be store brand. You can't have both of them being Whole Foods. One's got to be... One's got to give room to the other, right? So what I mean by that is if you try to have the sub and the kick both be really loud and take up a lot of presence, a lot of headroom, a lot of space in your mix, you're going to struggle to get that mix to sound right. So take take a, look at re, like reference songs for this and you'll see what I mean. If you listen to like a trap song or a lot of dubstep tracks or even a hip hop track, you might hear that the 808 or the sub is really really big in terms of the overall mix, right? It's taking up a lot of the, a lot of the headroom. And then the kick is usually less. Now compare that with like a Chainsmokers pop EDM type crossover song like Roses. And you'll, the kick is a little bit more upfront than the sub. That's not on accident. That's by design, right? And even if it is on accident, it, it happened just because it sounds better. Um, so sometimes that's based off of genre. And a lot of times it's based off of just your preference and the emotionality, hopefully that's a word, of the song, right? Now the second tip and trick or guideline that you should follow is you should be working in certain keys to get a good, loud, clean sub and subtones in your mix. Now, this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video. I've seen some misinformation out there on the interweb as of late. I saw a video where someone was like, the key of G sharp minor is the best key for subs. And I was like, well, that's, that's not telling the whole story. So I wanted you to get the full picture and the full story of this. So you guys probably have heard at some point that being key conscious with subs is important. That is because of the range of sub frequencies. Now, most people tend to think that sub frequencies are from 40 hertz to 60. And anything under that is still a sub frequency. It's just really, really hard to, to replicate in playback, right? Even on a big like festival or live venue setting, anything under 40 can be really hard to replicate, even in synths, right? So 40 to 60 is your golden range. Now, 60 is getting a little bit higher. Um, some people will say that 65 is still sub, so there's a little bit of buffer between 70 and 80, and 70 to 100 is usually where your bass range, your bass tones start. But if you stay in that range, you should be good to go. Now that's why the key of G sharp is not the only key to get a good sub. A couple things come into play here, and I, I wrote them down. I'm going to put this on screen for you guys. A couple things come into play. How you're moving in your progression will dictate what key you want to be in, right? So let's say in step one you chose that your sub's really important and you want to have really big meaty sub. Next is how many keys, you know, how many tones are you moving away from, right? So if you start on an F, do you only go to a, maybe you're playing like an F minor and you, you go to like a E or a D and then up to an A type thing. If you're moving around a lot, it might make sense to put that, that same progression in the key of G versus F sharp, right? Because then you're upping everything by a half. And that coincides with the sub frequencies. So the sub frequencies go from, I wrote them down so I wouldn't have to search for this on the video. They essentially go from E1 up to B1, and that's pushing it, or B flat one to be, to be safe. So E1 starts at 41.2 hertz, and B flat one is 58.3 hertz. So B1's at 61.7, so it's kind of on the cusp. Let's say we want to go back in time and make a main room banger. Um, you're just going to be hit, hitting one note the whole time on the kick, the boom, 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 right? And then your lead twinkles up above it. Now, in that instance, you could put it in F, you could put it in F sharp, you could put it G, G sharp, you could even put that thing in E or even in A, and you're still going to be in a sub range. It's just kind of the difference in sound might just be a different vibe for your track, and you got to kind of decide what's more important, having every note be perfectly, you know, in that sub range, 40 to 60, or do you want one of them to give a little bit and because it just sounds great with the emotionality, there's that word that I'm hoping is a word again, with your track. All right, the third tip and trick is saturation. Can I stress how important this is to creating nice, clean sounding subs? So we're actually going to go into Logic to look at this. All right, so we're in Logic right now, and I pulled up Serum, and we're going to load up a sine wave, right? Sub. Okay, so... Quick little side note, another little tip and trick. If you guys use Serum or Massive, um, there's this. There's a couple wavetables that 
start out as, as a pure sine function, and then as you move the wavetail position, they get buzzier, i.e. there are some harmonics added to them, most, li most likely with some saturation when they're making the wavetable, so, or what amounts to a saturation, rather. So if I just play this F sharp note, you'll notice that I'm going to put span on serum. That would make so much more sense so I can talk. So I'm going to turn this down and talk over it. So look at what you see on span real quick, and you will notice that the bulk of the sound is this one frequency bin here, right? And this is what I'm playing. Now there's just a couple harmonics above it. Now if we change our wavetable position and go to the edgy looking saw or sign here, you'll see that these different these different harmonics, these frequencies above our fundamental, were added to the sound, right? That's essentially what uh, what saturation will do. So let's just saturate inside of Serum, keep things simple. I'm going to load up the tube distortion. You can see that happening right now. Now, it's nice being able to control this with, a, uh, with an EQ so we can take off some of the highs if we don't want them all. And now if we crank this up quite high, it's starting to get really buzzy. So check this little trick out as well. I'm going to take an LFO, change it to envelope mode. We're gonna do about a bar. We're gonna modulate the mix of the drive or the mix of the distortion and the drive. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit menu, resample or rend or re yeah, resample to oscillator B. So now this distorted waveform that we just made is in oscillator B. So here's just oscillator B. But let's turn off our distortion. Right, so now we have this kind of, a, it's kind of like making our own version of the analog BD sign, where certain parts of our wavetable are going to be really buzzy. This one, is like a saw wave with a sign in it. Now, you can take that a step further, obviously, when you're starting to make these types of things, and we can roll off some of the highs. It still looks like we have mainly a sine wave here with some harmonics rolled up on the top, or added up top, right? And we rolled off a little bit of the highs. So that is what I'm talking about. Saturation, saturation, saturation. Now, there are, you can obviously do this with a ton of different plugins. I wanted to show you guys real quick with a amp plugin. So we'll just use, uh, let's just keep things simple. We're going to use the amp designer in Logic. I hardly ever pull this thing up. Uh, let's go to, let's do a sunshine stack for an orange. All right. And what we're going to do is make sure reverb is off. I hate spring reverbs. Ooh, saucy. All right. So let's go back and make sure that we're playing just this straight sine wave. And you can hear that's adding those frequencies. All right, so you guys get the idea, right? Taking a little bit of saturation on a sine wave adds harmonics, it adds frequencies to the sound that will allow you to hear it on speakers. It'll allow, like, speakers like uh, earbuds or laptop speakers, that sort of stuff, earbuds or headphones. But uh, it'll allow you to hear it on those types of playback settings. And it also just makes it come out of the mix a little bit more, right? You're just adding some higher frequencies to it, which we typically can hear better than the lower sub frequencies. So there you guys go. There are three kind of golden rules, guidelines for creating the perfect sub. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them up below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you next time.